Hi there, welcome back to Computing at Shaftesbury School. Today we're going to be going through secondary storage, which is a type of storage device uh, that you can attach to your computer. It differs from primary storage because it is not the stuff that your CPU can access. That's RAM. Okay, so secondary storage is the this back end storage, the, the storage of your files and folders, your games, your, your programs that all get um, saved onto your hard disk or whatever secondary storage for retrieval at a later date. Now in the exam you always get asked questions about which is going to be the most appropriate in particular situations. <clears throat> so we're going to go through the capacity, the speed and the cost of each of solid state, magnetic and optical, comparing them so that in different situations you can say which one would be most appropriate. Sorry about the wonky table we got going on here, but it's, it's going to be the easiest way to present this information. So solid state, magnetic and optical, all used for different purposes. Solid state, we're talking about uh, flash drives, we're talking about SSDs, that sort of thing. Magnetic, we're talking about spinning disk hard drives. And then optical storage is CDs, DVDs, anything where a laser fires against a disk to give you um, to give you the data. So solid state first of all. Capacity is increasing for solid state drives. It's not as big as magnetic but it's comparable to optical and so it's what we'd say mid-range in terms of capacity. You can get small solid state drives 32 gig, 8 gig, 4 gig, you know, small USB sticks, that sort of thing. But solid state in terms of your main secondary storage device in the computer, you're looking at 120 gig, 240, half terabyte, one terabyte solid state drives. So the capacity is mid, but increasing as technology develops. Its speed is high. Solid state devices are high speed. One of the best ways that you can upgrade a computer is by upgrading your magnetic hard drive to a high speed solid state device. Especially if it uses an M.2 interface and it's an NVMe, NVMe drive, it, it will have a massive throughput, much bigger than a magnetic device would. Its cost, however, is high. Particularly if you want that high speed, high capacity, your cost is going to be high as well. All right, let's have a look at another one. Magnetic drives then. In terms of capacity, they are cheap per gigabyte. So they are, um, they are high capacity. You can get um, one, two, 5, 10, 12 terabyte magnetic hard drives, so they can store, uh, well, if you're using a factor of 1,000, about 12,000 gigabytes of information. So a single hard drive can add massive storage capacity. So if you're wondering whether to use a solid state or a magnetic hard drive, you've got to think to yourself, how much space do I need? If you need multiple terabytes of storage space, then you're going to need a magnetic hard drive to be able to store that information on. The speed is mid-range. It's never going to be as fast as a high-speed solid-state drive because there are spinning uh, components in a hard drive. You've got a disk, you've got a read head that goes onto that disk, and that read head needs to move backwards and forwards across the disk head to be able to read those ones and zeros off. The throughput of the data out of the hard drive may well be very high capacity, but as long as you've got something that physically needs to move over a spinning disk, then you're going to be slow. Always going to be slower than just referencing data from a chip. So the speed is mid-range. The cost, however, is, as I said, low per gigabyte. You can get a uh, 30, um, well for about 30 pounds you can get maybe a 120 gigabyte um, solid state drive, but for 30 pounds you'd be easily getting a terabyte disk drive. So it's a factor of um, factor of 30 
uh, factor of three, sorry, about three and a third, factor of three um, cheaper per gigabyte than a low end, so not even a high speed um, SSD. Let's move on to optical. So optical drives are going to be your CD, DVD, anything where there's a laser that shines against a disc surface and goes onto a read head. Now that disc surface is going to is going to have pits and lands in it, and those pits and lands are going to cause the laser to bounce backwards and forwards between a one and a zero position, and the transition between one to the other is where you get your ones and zeros. You don't need to know that so much, other than to say that this disc is spinning, the laser is bouncing, and the laser is on this motorized little track that moves forwards and backwards to be able to put it into the right position. And as we've said, as soon as you have to move things around, your speed is going to be low, even lower than a magnetic disk. Magnetic hard drives you can spin at uh, either 5,400 or 7,200 revs per minute. Optical drives, not nearly so much. And because the, the capacity uh, per square inch in terms of ones and zeros is lower on optical, that means that you're not reading off as many ones and zeros per revolution of the disk as well. In terms of capacity, eh, mid-range to low end. Your CD is going to give you approximately 700 megabytes of information. It's not a huge amount. A DVD is going to give you 4.7 gigabytes per layer per side. And usually, a DVD, if you're DVD writable, you're looking at four and a half gigabytes of user writable information. Blu-rays, up that to about 25 gigabytes, but they're very expensive per disc and Blu-ray writers aren't particularly cheap either. And so at this point, um, you're, you're sort of skirting the bounds between your cost and capacity benefit ratio, particularly when you're talking about only read once and uh, sorry, write once and read many. If you can't rewrite to it all the time, then is it really worth it for that job? So speed, low because of spinning, optical, optically read moving parts, and also cost, we're talking low per disc, but that's not necessarily low per gigabyte. So a CD, is gonna have uh, 700 megabytes of information. It only costs pennies each. To be honest, if you're sending a file to someone, it's probably your cheapest way of sending someone a file in the post. Even cheaper, of course, is to use online services. Your OneDrive, iCloud, Dropbox type storage service, where you can upload that information, they can get a download link, and no one's had to shell out any money, unless you're not a subscriber of one of those services already. Okay, so that's your uh, brief run through. Very soon we're gonna come across not just capacity, speed and cost, but we'll talk more about durability, uh, performance and reliability as well. I hope that helps.